From cycle rotors to jet power, and even artificial wings, we take a look at some of the strangest propulsion systems out there for drones. As most of you know, Leonardo da Vinci came up with some very fascinating aerial screw designs over 500 years ago. And finally, this idea has been modernized. First modeled in a simulation, this design demonstrated some very interesting vortexes. And after several months in testing, the University of Maryland actually came up with a drone which could fly on this design. With the right optimization, the craft could reduce downwash and potentially operate quieter than a typical propeller. The downside is, is that this is a pretty complex design without gaining any efficiencies in lift. It's fairly safe to say that this is not going to displace propellers anytime soon, but it is fascinating to see something like the aerial screw actually work for drones. So there are many different ideas out there, and a newer idea was likely derived from the Marine Cheryl propeller. The original selling points were faster planing and more efficiency at a particular RPM. MIT transitioned this idea over to the multi-rotor, and there are some very interesting improvements, with the most notable being that there was less audible spikes at specific frequencies. Now, of course, many people have tested this propeller design, and there's still debate on performance gains. Basically, this prop has to be optimized for every multi-rotor out there. The argument is, is that this will likely not have any improvement because you can already configure a propeller to have three or four blades with different flying characteristics. Ultimately, I think the toroidal prop is a very niche thing and it's not going to break numbers anytime soon. I'm going to digress a little bit and get into a different type of propulsion system called the cycle rotor. And you can kind of think of this as a paddle boat going through water. The cycle rotor works by accelerating fluid with a perpendicular rotating mechanism. And this orbital motion along with pitch angle generates a relatively high thrust. Individual blades can also be pitched providing rapid thrust vectoring. There are several downsides to the cycle rotor with the most prominent being complexity, so higher cost along with being a heavier setup. However, you could use a cycle rotor for different hybrid applications. The Astria is an excellent hybrid example. Unlike a multi-rotor which has to pitch to change its horizontal position, the Astria can just use a cycle rotor on top and it doesn't pitch at all, making it very useful for certain applications like inspection or even working on remote equipment. In conclusion, cycle rotors are probably not going to displace propeller-based systems anytime soon, but they could be used in hybrid applications where there is more stabilization required. So probably the most obvious and extreme idea is to retrofit the multi-rotor with a jet engine. Many startup electric vehicle companies have revealed their own concept with jet engines simply due to the extreme performance gains. In reality, there are very few jet drones simply due to cost. The Jet Quad is a perfect example as it has very extreme abilities such as going over 300 miles per hour with a 40 pound payload, but it's also going to be priced at around $250,000. Will we ever see cheaper models come out? Well, it's kind of hard to say because this is dependent on innovation and fabrication techniques. So until we get multi-material 3D printers out there which can build jet engines, I highly doubt that we will see jet drones flying around everywhere. However, jet engines have one of the highest thrust ratios compared to all the different propulsion systems. And there will always be a high-end market for these types of manned aerial vehicles. One of the weirdest candidates out there is ion propulsion. Electro-hydrodynamic thrusters use a high strength field to generate a plasma of ionized air. Ions are drawn towards a negatively charged grid, collide into neutral molecules, and then impact momentum. This was experimented with a very small 2 cm squared prototype. And oddly enough, it was found that scaling EHD thrusters down actually provides better thrust to weight ratios. So this might be a good idea for micro aerial vehicles. But with all things considered, it never really took off so to speak, as it's very difficult to integrate a high voltage power supply on board. Ethan Cross has also developed a large RC vehicle with its own power supply. Now he is still working on this idea, and he's trying to progress it into further applications. So make sure to check out his channel, and I will try to keep an update on his work as well. Another side project worth noting is the Ventus, which attempts to use ion stabilization with a ducted fan in the middle for lower decibels. It's still a work in progress and nothing revolutionary has come to fruition. Ultimately, ion propulsion is very interesting because there are no moving parts. 
but it's very tricky to incorporate an onboard power supply, and these types of drones have very limited maneuverability. The basic variants of winged robots are slow, and they lack the performance characteristics of a typical drone. However, there are newer micro aerial vehicles which bypass the limitation of typical motor and gear designs. There are different ways around this, but the most fascinating development is probably the liquid amplified zipping actuator. And this has the potential to cycle at a very fast rate, utilizing electrodes and a liquid dielectric. The electrodes can be pulsed, and they can actually last for over 1 million cycles. It's a type of redundant system, so it's perfect for micro-aerial vehicles, but it's still not really scalable for larger types of drones. As an overview, there are many different alternatives to a typical propeller, the most notable being the aerial screw and the toroidal prop. However, these two types of designs have to be very specific and they have to be applicable to a very particular multi-rotor in order to be effective. Cyclorotors also exist, they're a little bit more complex, but you can use them for hybrid stabilization. Ion propulsion has a really strong potential, no pun intended, but it is very reliant on having an onboard power supply with a high voltage. There is also a flapping wing design which could utilize a liquid dielectric and these could be very useful for micro aerial vehicles. Jet propulsion has the highest thrust to weight ratios, but it is overly expensive and really hinged on future fabrication techniques. In the future, it is very likely that micro aerial vehicles will have some different type of setup, but for the typical average consumer drone, we will likely see propellers here to stay for a very long time. Anyways, I most certainly got some stuff wrong on this video, and I would definitely like to hear some of your opinions about these propulsion based systems. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.